What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another video by the Freelancer Codex Podcast. Today, we're going to discuss the demo that was finally released to the general public. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to put a link down below to the full video so you can check that out. But today, we're going to kind of cover the first five minutes of the demo and do a real deep dive on all the information that we found and all the little intricate details that I saw as I watched this demo over and over again. Uh, so sit back, relax, and enjoy it. First thing we're going to start with is I'm going to play the first five minutes. Just let it play out, and then we'll talk about it. But let's get to it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anthem. I'm Ben Irving, one of the lead producers for the game. And on behalf of everyone here at Bioware, we are excited to share this live gameplay experience with all of you. Joining me today are four amazing developers, controllers in hand, ready to take you on an adventure through the mysterious world of Anthem. Now a second caravan's been hit. Another one? Contract's getting fun now. You have the strangest sense of fun. You guys starting without me? Freelancer, time to get to work. Faye said these bastards made some kind of acid. They're using it as a weapon. Melted a couple of supply caravans. Scar's taking down whole caravans. Damn. I know. Should make this a challenge, huh? I like a challenge. Uh, who, who gets uh, cyber duty? The chair's all yours. Yes! So, find where they're making this garbage and shut it all down. <sighs> Piece of cake, right? <laughs> Our expedition starts in the player's strider. This is your forward base of operations. Here you can equip your javelin with a wide array of gear, weapons, and abilities, as well as customize your appearance to show off your own personal style and flair. In front of us, we have the Colossus. Jen will be our squad leader today, so Jen, let's jump in and get started. At the start of any expedition, we need to decide who we want to play with. Jen will be inviting two of her friends, but when you play the game, you will choose from your friends, guildmates, other like-minded individuals, or even go out and explore the world on your own. Now that our squad is formed, we need to pick our objective. This is the map screen, and as you can see, there are a lot of different activities to choose from. For today, we'll be playing the mission Scars and Villainy. Anthem is a social, co-op, action RPG from Bioware where you will join a group called the Freelancers. The Freelancers are the brave few who go out into the wild and face danger head on. They can do this because they are equipped with powerful javelin exosuits. These javelins are handcrafted and passed down from generation to generation, allowing those who have them to go out into the wild and feel super heroic. Today we will play from Jen's perspective in her Colossus, a heavily armored battle exo that trades agility for massive firepower. As you can see, her two friends have joined us. Renata is playing in the Ranger, a faster moving javelin with a focus on precision. Scylla is also playing a Colossus, but with a completely different loadout, one that focuses on close quarter combat, and we'll see his flamethrower a bit later on. He also has a totally different appearance with that sweet, sweet red speed stripe. Ours is an unfinished world, a world abandoned by its gods, the Shapers. It's also a reactive world. Here you can see our jets are overheating, but we can fly through this waterfall to cool them off. Owen, what's the plan here? Picking up loads of scars nearby. Take a look around the area, but uh, be careful. Owen is our cipher and guide for the mission and will provide valuable intel. Scars are relentless invaders who crave the ancient power of the Shaper technology, and they're in a constant conflict with the Freelancers. Up 
Up ahead, we have a Scar Watchtower. Our squad should probably tread lightly here so they don't call for reinforcements. Oh, he could just blow it up. Look at all the weapons. Oh, and the, and the turrets. Better move quickly. Man, that was a great start to the demo. There's a lot to talk about. So let's get started. I'm going to start all the way back here at the beginning, uh, all the way when you're in your Strider. Right? I really liked that the first things they talked about uh, as you're listening to the conversation is they're talking about working the contract. That's, that's something that we'll probably run into quite often uh, as we're playing the game. We're out there, you know, as freelancers to go and solve problems and issues. And so I'm sure us two taking contracts and going out and doing this stuff uh, is going to be a big part of the game. The next thing I noticed here inside the Strider uh, is if you look directly to the right, uh, you'll see some weapons right there. And that to me looks like somewhere where you're probably going to do maybe some customization, maybe some crafting uh, of your weapons. And of course in the back there you can see the Colossus Javelin. Um, we do know from the uh, Ask Me Almost Anything About Anthem <laughs> live stream they had last week, uh, they talked about that uh, customizing your Javelin will be something you do in your forge and you have access to that here uh, in the Strider as well as in Fort Tarsus. So uh, the Strider looks really cool and I can't wait to explore it more and find out more about what's, what's all in the Strider. The next thing we run into here in the demo uh, is a first little glimpse of the map, but there's also so much more on this page. Uh, it goes over some objectives. Obviously, you know, you can change the difficulty of the missions that you're doing. And then if you look on the right there a little bit, you have your squad, which you, know, you can play with four people. And the next interesting thing there is consumables. We don't really know much about the consumables. They haven't given us any information about it yet. Uh, hopefully we'll find out some more about that soon. There's a lot of theories going around about what they could be. Uh, so, But as soon as we know more about those consumables, we'll let you know. The next interesting thing that I saw was when they show you the nameplates. When you're getting into your teams there, uh, they have unique nameplates that you can change and customize to really suit your style. Uh, obviously, going on to the next screen here, what we see is the matchmaking. right? So you're going to be able to play with your friends, whether that's just your friends maybe on Xbox Live or uh, on Origin or in the PlayStation Network. Uh, they're also going to be able to play with people in a guild, which uh, they haven't really told us much about yet, but they did say we're going to be able to play with our guild mates. As well, as you can see on the recommended uh, little piece there, they're going to recommend people that maybe have the same interests as we do. Maybe they're looking for the same mission so that we can join together uh, and do some you know, interesting things. Hopefully. Uh, another thing that I saw down here, if you look at the very bottom, you see it says View Gamer Card. So that's uh, something interesting because normally that's reserved for uh, Xbox Live. And so we have a question out to the community manager about whether they're, you know, this wasn't supposed to be there or if, um, you know, they're doing actually a Windows 10 version that goes, you know, that works with Xbox Live. So. Uh, on PC. Uh, that'll be really interesting if they do have that. I mean, they already announced it for Origin, uh, which is EA's, you know, online service for PC. So, uh, yeah, some interesting information there, whether that's supposed to be there or not. This also kind of led to some confusion by some people saying, oh, this video footage was from the Xbox One X, which also the lead uh, community manager from Bioware confirmed it's not. It's PC footage. So, Interesting things ahead. Hopefully they'll give us an answer soon. Here's another quick look at the customizable nameplates they showed off in the demo. Uh, it's something I think that's going to be great. You know, it's, it's in a lot of other games. And I'm looking forward to seeing all the art and uh, nameplates that they've created for us. Next up, we have the map screen. So in here, you can kind of see a few of the subregions, as they call them. There's the Great Falls Canyon, Academy of Ruins. Eastern Reach, East Gate, uh, down below there's uh, Tarsus Valley, I believe it is, or Valley Tarsus. Uh, there is, on the in the video, we can kind of see nine uh, out of the ten uh, subregions that are in the map or in the game when it comes out. Uh, obviously the demo took place in a very small portion uh, of the entire map. The one thing they, they always point out is you can't really think of the map 
uh, as just a flat plane like we normally do for a lot of the other games. It's just like, all right, how far is it to walk from here to here? Because in Anthem, there's verticality, right? You can go up really high, obviously, with being able to fly. And then you can also dive pretty deep. Uh, they did say that, ask me almost anything about Anthem uh, live stream, that they haven't measured the deepest cave yet or how far down or negative, you know, you can go uh, in the world. And so, but they did say it's very deep and there's lots of things to explore. I really like looking at this map. I like the way it looks. I like the emblems. Uh, some of these emblems that you can see, obviously, there's Fort Tarsus down there uh, to the bottom left. Uh, if you're looking at the other emblems, one with the three triangles, you did say are, are missions or story missions. Um, obviously, in the video, in the demo, we go up to the one right next to a story mission, which is a stronghold. And then uh, right next to where it kind of says Eastern Reach, there's another icon that uh, Stephen pointed out in the podcast last week. Um, you know, we don't know what exactly those are. That could be a points of interest. They did say they have points of interest, missions, uh, and those kind of things that are going to be on the map. So we don't know what all the emblems mean yet, but uh, we're interested to find out. I really like the look, you know, again, with the, with the water, you know, showing off there. And then you can kind of see that it's a topographical map. In a way, it's not perfect, but it, it shows you a lot of the information. So I'm interested to, to get my hands on it and to check it out more. Another thing I noticed is right after, you know, everybody gets on top of the Strider and they're about ready to go on their mission. If you look to the top left of this image here, you can see ruins from ancient civilization. We kind of talked about this a little bit in the podcast, and it's something I thought was really interesting. Uh, obviously, before the Legion of Dawn and the first freelancers came about, uh, the humans, you know, were living outside and, and doing the best they could to protect themselves. So this is kind of on the outs outskirts of Fort Tarsus, and um, I just thought it was really interesting and really cool to see some of the uh, ancient civilization or old ruins from mankind here on uh, the planet where uh, you know Anthem takes place so it'll be interesting to see how much of those are explorable and how much more we can we can see of those in the game I know we saw them last year in the demo that was released or the, the seven minute video so I, I think it's gonna be pretty prevalent at least close to Fort Tarsus where uh, mankind was is kind of all clustered um, it'll be interesting to see if we can find more maybe even some more technologically advanced ruins and things like that from the shapers so who knows there's a lot of really cool details that i saw in here one just checking out the environment looks amazing uh two it, it kind of gives you a great view of how different the uh colossus each are you know they're the same type of javelin but they they look different you know the the armor they're wearing is different the weapons they have is different they both have shields and they both have a similar look you know obviously they're both colossus but they're definitely unique and different another cool thing if you look on the ranger there that's a sweet looking pistol or handgun there um you know it'll be interesting to see how much weapon variety they have in the game and how much we can really customize uh you know our whole kit and, and everything we're going to take with us out into the wild next up is right after when the colossus jumps off the strider and he's headed out to go figure out what's going on. You see these creatures here. If you look closely, uh, their name is Teslar. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it's T-E-S-I-L-A-R. Uh, as with 99% of the creatures uh, in Anthem, they are all very dangerous and will attack you. So I just thought it was kind of interesting to see the first couple uh, creatures here, that uh, everything out there is dangerous. There's a reason why we have to have javelin suits. Uh, it's because everything out there is I would say pretty much above humans on the food chain. So um, it'll be interesting to see how much and how often we deal with these creatures and, and how dangerous many of them are. So I look forward to finding out. This next thing that I wanted to point out was right here at the first combat area. A lot of people have had questions. As you can see here, if you look under the classes, you can see Ranger, you know, zero two, 2 And you can see the two bars. One's green, one's blue. And if you look all the way over to the very right, you can see Colossus 02. And it has the same green and blue bars. Most people are thinking that those blue bars on top are for a shield or something similar. Uh, but what I think they are is actually for the de defensive maneuvers. And I'll show you why here. I'm going to put this clip of the storm. And if you look at the meter, it has the same blue meter on top of its health meter. 
And when it does a defensive roll, like to blink out of the way of, of damage, that meter goes down. So I'm going to put that here right now. So you see here on the storm, whenever it blinks, it does a really quick twice. And you can see that that, you know, that blue meter goes down. And so I think that blue meter is the same for all the javelins. They all have a defensive maneuver. Uh, some of them can do that while they're in the air. Some of them can't. Uh, we've seen the storm do it. And we've also seen uh, the ranger do it. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of defensive maneuver the Colossus has as well as the Intercept. Uh, if you think this is something different, let me know. You know. Leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think that that blue bar is. So last thing up here that I want to talk about in this uh, deep dive is the loot. So in here they, they showed off a couple of different uh, things of loot that popped. Uh, this first one that we run into here is an epic once he picks it up. You know, this purple uh, diamond shaped over there. Uh, one of the cool things is there's lots of loot in this game and uh, they gave us there's six different uh, rarity levels of loot it's common uncommon rare epic which is what the purple one is and the last two are legendary and then masterwork the last two they told us in the ask me almost anything about anthem uh, live stream uh, those two names are still kind of uh, up in the air although i think <clears throat> they're probably going to stick with them as they had legendary last year when they in the video when they showed off uh jara's wrath and then Masterwork, I think, is just something that's really cool. It's the top tier. You know, uh, they talk a lot about the Javelins and how they're not mass-produced. You know, these are handcrafted, handmade, and handed down, uh, you know, over the last hundred years that the uh, freelancers have been around. So I think if you can get uh, Masterwork gear, you know, you can really upgrade your Javelin. Uh, they already talked about how you can have everything be legendary to create uh, a legendary Javelin. So I'm guessing the same thing is going to happen for Masterwork. Um, you know, we don't know for sure what's, what, what's all going to happen. There's still a lot of information up in the air, a lot of questions, but they did say it's going to be really hard to get those Masterwork uh, pieces. And that's something that, you know, we're going to grind for. It's something we're going to try and find the best version of this loot and the best version of the gear that we're using so we can accomplish uh, all the things we really want. Of course, the, the easier way to find that stuff is to play the game on higher difficulty levels. So that's something that uh, I'm looking forward to. Let me know what you guys think about the loot. Are you guys excited? Uh, oh, one more thing I almost forgot. So they did say in that uh, live stream last week that, uh, say, you know, if he's watching the demo in the next little section, they passed up some loot and they didn't pick it up. And, of course, we're like, what the heck? Why would you not pick up that loot? Because... There was a legendary drop, uh, but they told us that everything besides common will be shipped back uh, to a post uh, type system where you can pick it up either at your Strider or back at Fort Tarsus. So I thought that's great. You know, I mean, I don't have to worry about, you know, maybe I didn't catch all the loot. You know, they're going to have a similar system where you can't, uh, you know, look, look at it up in the field. You either have to go back to your Strider or you got to go back to Fort Tarsus to basically decipher what that loot is and figure out what you got and uh, so you can go back real quick and then check out what you got maybe quick equip some new items and then head back out and uh, go find some more loot so that's all i have for this video uh, i'm going to make this into kind of a four-part series let me know if you guys like this video and want me to do more of them um i'm really excited for anthem you know obviously it's freelancer codex podcast we uh continue to talk about anthem every week and we're here, you know, to bring you guys all the news. We're, we're very excited. We're fans just like you guys. And we, you know, anticipate this game uh, every week with excitement. And uh, we're looking forward to any and all information we can get. This uh, this week, they did announce there's going to be some a blog post about music that's coming up. As well as downloadable content or downloadable maybe music for us to download to check out. So we'll let you guys know about that as soon as we find out. And, uh... Again, until next time, there's a shape of storm coming. See you on the other side.